So I recently just picked up the new M1 Mac Mini. Well, I guess it's not that new now. It's been out for a few months. Back in November when it originally came out, there was a lot of fear in the music production community about like what's gonna work, what's gonna be broken, how long it's gonna be broken. But in this video, we're just gonna go over my first impressions with using the M1 Mac Mini for music production. My workhorse computer for the past few years has been a semi-custom gaming PC from CyberPower PC. I originally picked it up for 475 a couple years ago, which was honestly a steal. That PC as it is now has an i5-8400, a GTX 1060, and 32 gigs of RAM. It also has three terabytes worth of storage with one M.2, one SATA SSD, and one normal hard drive. And that computer has genuinely served me very well for a long time. I've owned a 2008 white MacBook, a 2011 MacBook Pro 15 inch that died, a 2011 21 and a half inch iMac, a 2016 MacBook Pro 13 inch, then for some reason got rid of that and then got a 2017 MacBook Pro 13 inch. Then I hated the dongle life and I sold that to get a 2015 MacBook Pro 13 inch. So I've had a bunch of them and my interest in the M1 Mac was one, I heard it was really silent and that was super appealing to me. Also, when I looked at the potential benchmarks, the M1 Mac mini did benchmark with better scores than my PC. So that was a huge draw as well. I ended up purchasing a one terabyte SSD, 16 gigabyte Mac mini, which was refurbished. So it was actually $200 off and after tax and Apple Care, it got just under the new price before tax and Apple Care. I very thoroughly enjoyed the unboxing experience. The only new Apple product that I've actually unboxed by myself before was my iPhone SE 2020, which I'm recording this video with. Once I got the computer fully set up and I was in the operating system and kind of set up some programs, there were a few things coming from Windows that bothered me. I'm gonna mention them, but I am also going to give you a pettiness warning. Some of this is extremely petty, just letting you know so I don't get hate comments later. First of all, the mouse acceleration in Mac OS is one of the worst things about using it in my opinion, and it genuinely like almost ruins my experience. I don't know what method I used to fix it, but I was able to find something to where it's either gone or a lot less now. I say that because that terminal command that you used to be able to use doesn't seem to work all the time, and especially if you try to change the mouse tracking speed, it doesn't always work. Um, but between that and maybe some third-party extensions, it's not bothering me now. The other thing that jumped out to me right away is the font smoothing, which I only just recently figured out how to disable through a terminal command. This used to be something you could do in the general settings, but everything just looks bold. Like every font looks bold and it, that was starting to give me a headache. So I have it thinned out now, so I don't have to deal with that. The lack of built-in window snapping, I think is really stupid. There is something that I use called Better Snap Tool, which does work with the M1 Mac and it's fine, it's good. But I wish they would implement that as like an actual built-in feature. Another thing that bothered me was the Bluetooth connectivity. I tried using a Bluetooth Razer Basilisk mouse, I think it was. Now, I hated that mouse in general, but it was weirdly skippy trying to use it on this M1 Mac. And just for comparison, I did try it out on my PC and it was definitely less of like a jaggedy experience. There's probably a better word for that, but that's just how it felt. It's just very skippy. I do have a uh, Bluetooth keyboard plugged in right now. This is a Logitech K380. No problems with this, thankfully, because I love this keyboard. And now I'm just using a Logitech G602 mouse that's dirty. I think the rounding of certain elements in macOS looks really tacky. So the really big one that I notice when you go to about this Mac or about my Mac, you're like hovering over these icons and there's just something about the way that things highlight and move just makes it feel like a cheap experience. Unless I'm missing something, I do not see a merge function when you're trying to like, when you've got, let's say, one folder named 2019 with a bunch of different folders inside of that. And then another folder named 2019 with a bunch of different folders inside of that. The only option that I'm getting is to replace. That's enough of me being a little bit petty. Some of it is not petty. Mouse acceleration, super annoying. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that really impressed me when I was using this machine. This computer is dead fucking silent. It is unbelievably amazing. This was one of the things that prevented me from buying and using a Mac long-term for a long time because it could not handle power tasks under load. So the fact that I can be like rendering like a 4K video in Resolve or be going through like a huge Ableton project and it's dead silence, quieter than my PC was idle, it's 
so nice. Like if you're a musician and you've dealt with noisier PCs before, it is just, it is so nice. I cannot say that enough. Funny, but kind of annoying, but mostly funny. So I recently switched to Kali Audio LP6s, which people used to have like a really bad issue with like this like hiss that they have. And I never noticed it until I got this computer and then it's like midnight and I'm just trying to like watch some YouTube videos. And then the only thing that I hear because I don't hear that is like this from the speakers. That's how quiet it is. I was like, this is weird. Like, I feel like I'm gonna start hearing the blood in my freaking ears. The M1 makes certain things in programs, especially in Ableton and also in Resolve, it makes them feel weirdly quick or quick in weird categories, if that makes sense. Like in Ableton, I can just zoom in and out of a project really fast and just drag around and it keeps up just fine. And in Resolve, I can skip around on a video and it's not choking or like hesitating nearly as much, even with optimized media as my PC was. Some of this could be a spec thing, but I have noticed people coming from other Mac systems as well, and even ones that are, should be more powerful than the M1. They've been seeing these kinds of improvements and weird snappiness too. It is quick. Also just the animations for almost everything in Mac OS seems a lot smoother. In performance comparisons with my PC, it genuinely does perform either equal or better. I'm using Ableton Suite 10. I tested a metal project that I have that I'm working on and a tropical house project and an orchestral project. What I was testing was a few things. One was performance, one was load time, and the other was RAM usage. I have a Samsung 970 EVO Plus one terabyte in my gaming PC. So M.2, super blazing fast, and actually the on-paper specs of that are really close to this M1. Opening up the projects in macOS was definitely a good bit quicker. Some were only by a few seconds, but then one project that I had, it's like a recreation I was working on last year of Dance Macabre by Camille Sanson. It loaded so much more quickly. I think the Mac loaded it in less than 30 seconds and the PC took about a minute and a half to get that same project open. And then for the other two projects, the performance was about the same when you've got like loads of, you know, sausage fattener serum processing on all kinds of stuff. I don't use sausage fattener on everything. I totally should though. Or especially ozone, whenever there was a project that had ozone on it. The M1 is actually using more RAM than I think it should be. That's probably because it's being translated. That's my guess. And I say that because on my 2015 MacBook Pro, I would compare projects and it would be using like way less RAM. I think when we get a more M1 optimized version of Ableton that's not running through Rosetta, we should see better performance all around, not as much RAM usage. If you decide to get one for music production, just get 16 gigs of RAM, please. You can get away with eight, and so if that's just what you want and you're trying to go for that base model, it's 589 refurbished. That's an amazing price. Then then do that. But if you're trying to use this to replace another machine that you have and you've been doing it for a while, go for the 16, hands down, no questions asked. You don't need to be running insane Spitfire sessions or anything. So how are we gonna conclude these first impressions for this Mac Mini? I really, really enjoy using it. There are some small things regarding plugin compatibility and maybe small plugin issues that I do want to address in a future video. That'll be the next thing that I take a look at with this computer. If you're an actual professional, I would wait for now. There's definitely some plugins that I've tested that are not working as well as they should be or just not working at all. So you're gonna to wanna to wait until things are natively supported. While I plan on making a dedicated video about plugin compatibility, I will put a list in the description of plugins that I've been using that are either fully or mostly working. I think for most people making music, they could actually probably go on here and be fine with it being dead silent and really powerful going toe to toes with the, even the newest Mac Pro, as well as like a 9900K, if you're measuring things more that way. And the fact that this is a new architecture from Apple that they're planning on improving and using for a long time, it is a very hard computer not to recommend for a lot of people. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. That is helpful for me. And if you have any comments or things that I missed or anything that you want me to cover in a different video about it, please let me know in the comments. I am Matt and thank you so much for watching. Bye. It's so f***ing small. <laughs>